Now let's go on to existential quantifier. So the definition here is that um, the backwards E is the existential quantifier. Am I going to go off? I'm going to go off. Yeah. Is the, is the existential quantifier like that? Uh, and it means there exists or um, there exists, where did I write this? There exists or there is some or for some, something like that. So for all, what for all means is that whatever you're talking about works for everything in the domain. Kind of the opposite of it working for everything in the domain is it working for at least one, right? The opposite of everything is just kind of one, you know, if that makes any sense. Um, and we're going to see it, these statements, the for all in there exists are kind of yin, they're kind of like a yin yang situation going on. But anyway, that's what there exists means. So for example, if you had, there is some pair of people in this Zoom with the same birthday. That's a statement, right? And what's it saying? It's saying, well, it's saying there is some. So it's saying that there exists, there's some pair of people. It's saying there exists a pair, right? We'll call it A, B. In, actually, I'll go X, Y, just to show you you can do whatever you want. In X, Y, in this Zoom, that's like your domain. Your domain is in the, the domain is peer, pairs of people in this Zoom. Pairs of people in this Zoom with the same birthday. So what are we saying about these pairs of people in Zoom? We're saying about their, this, their, at least this one person, this one pair of people in the Zoom. We're saying that X and Y have the same birthday. And we can call this, I don't know, let's call it R, R, X, Y. So R, X, Y is an X and Y the same birthday. And so how can we write this sentence in our more math notation where we say, well, there exists a pair in the pairs of people in Zoom such that R, X, Y is true. So they have the same birthday. I've got a quick question. Yeah. Is, is there any like notation or verbiage for when the order of the pairs or the variables don't matter? Because previously we said like, if we, if we have a pair, sometimes they do matter. And then in this case, that doesn't. Is there like some notational difference between those two? Um, um, yes. Or, or is that like out of the scope of this class? That's a little out of the scope of this class. Okay, okay. Talk to me after class. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you the difference there. For now, we'll just assume everything in this class is as the, the pairs order. But anyways, it makes sense how this statement's the same thing as this statement right here. And by the way, is it true? Wait, wait, wait. Let's go through real quick. My, my birthday is June 22nd. Anybody match with that? Camille, what's your birthday? January 7th. January 7th. Anybody match with January 7th? What else we got here? We got November 20th. Anybody match with that? May 26th?
July 11th, September, September 30th. Oh, it's coming up. December 31st. December 28th. Oh, dang, close. No? Okay. Well, that's okay. It doesn't matter if the statement's true or false. It just matters that the statement is going to be one of the two. And in this case, it happens to be false. We're close, though. So that's an essential quantifier. I'll do one more example with this, and then we'll get out of here. So an existential, another example of an existential statement would be, uh, there is a power of three such that um, such that it such that it is prime. I'm oh, sorry, no, such that it is even. Actually, I'll say prime. And prime number we'll define later, but it just means it's only divisible by itself in one. So there's the power of three such that it is prime. But once again, this there is, we should be thinking there exists. Or maybe I should say to you a little more practice, a little less obvious. For some, for some power of three, I'll say some power of three, some power of three is prime. Let's just start over. Some power of three is prime. All right. Why is that interesting? Because, or, or, or how, how do we translate this with the there exists symbol? Well, some power of three, the power of three here, powers of three are gonna be our domain. We're saying something about the powers of three. And these powers of three, they're one, three, three squared is nine, three cubed is 27, three to the fourth is 81, on, on, on like that. So, so we're saying something about the powers of three. What are we saying with powers three? We're saying that there exists, we're saying there exists well, at least one power of three such that it is prime. So here, kind of our, I don't know, let's just call it M of M of uh, A is equal to saying A is prime. So we can rewrite this statement. This whole statement is equivalent to there exists an A and D such that M of A, such that A is prime. That's all we're saying. This is an existential statement, and this over here is a universal statement. A universal statement, you know, they both say something about a domain, right? So they say something about a domain, the thing they're saying is the predicate, and the quantifier tells you exactly the range of the domain you're talking about. For all saying for all the things in the domain, the predicate's true. There exists a saying for at least one thing in the domain, the predicate's true. But we'll do that next time. Any questions? Can you scooch the board over a little bit? What do you say? Could you scooch the board a little bit over? Oh, I'm the, so sorry about that. Right side. Yeah, there, we go. there you go, yeah. So you're saying for so some power of three, some power of three is prime. That's saying there exists. A power of three, so there exists something in the powers of three, so one, three, nine, twenty-seven, eighty-one, on like that, such that it is in fact prime. And is this true? No. no. It, it can't be true. Why can't it be true? Because 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 we haven't defined prime yet, but once we do, we know that power of three. Yeah, power of three implies it's not prime. What about uh, three itself? 
Uh, uh, that's uh, cheating. Uh, <laughs> that's cheating as a power in three. It's three to the one. <laughs> so, we'll so, 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 you know, it, so it depends on you define power of three and all that, but we're defining power power of three, so include three, then it is going to be true because three is prime. Once again, don't worry if you don't know what a Hemsworth brother is. Don't worry if you don't know what a rational means. Don't worry if you don't know what primes are, right? The point isn't any of the specifics. The point isn't if it's true or false. The point is that it is going to have a truth value. So we just made right we just figured out a way to make this predicate right m is a predicate q is a predicate we figured out how to make these predicates into statements by defining a domain on which we're saying something about them right that's freaking brilliant and that is how we connect that's how we connect these predicates these kind of open-ended things to real statements and then we can actually start to do like the if x is even x plus one is odd thing. And that, boom, math. Math comes from there with some more key steps in between. But anyway, if anyone has more questions, I'll stop recording. It's been a good week, everybody.